Alright guys and welcome back. Right, in today's episode I am going to strip this C20 Let engine and see exactly what it needs. So let's make a start. So first off I want to whip the head off and just check the bores, make sure everything looks good. So I'm going to take the turbo off, inlet off, strip it all and go from there. I'm going to start by taking the studs out for the turbo and as you can see, not even tired. <laughs> this is interesting. Now, first thing I notice, these are normal M8 stainless steel nuts. They're not exhaust nuts. Exhaust nuts are generally squished at the end of the thread, which obviously these aren't. So they're like a nylock essentially, but without the nylon. So they're just tight at the end. So when you start tightening them up, they won't come loose, even if the thing is tight essentially. So yeah, we need to ditch them unfortunately. The studs can stay there. One KKK turbo. Little bonus. That core looks really new to me. It's all clean. So it may be a reconditioned one. Next thing we notice is a HH5 block. This is a uh, probably a mid generation C20 let. The lower the number, the older it is essentially. The later ones were HG. So yeah. I think they went up to like eight. So yeah. Fairly middle. It's also a genuine C20 let block. Probably struggle to see that, but there is a number, which is good. We're now going to remove the breather and the dipstick tube. Now, what a surprise, these are also loose. I, uh, I have a feeling there might be a few things loose on this engine. Oh, and the gasket's broken as well, so yeah, not good that. We need a gasket for that. Next job, thermostat. Again, two of mates, 13 mils. I hope you can see that, but the gasket is absolutely as flat as anything. That should be, well, it is an O-ring. It's really deteriorated. That's never, ever going to hold coolant. So again, it's a good job I struck that. Right, crank sensor. M6, 10 mil, holding it in. So when you remove these, the seal always stays in. It's a little O-ring. So you just have to carefully take that out, just like that. Put it back on, and there we're good. But that looks in good condition and it's a genuine GM one, which is good. Well, I say it looks in good condition, there's a little bit of tape there. But other than that, I think that's just the outer insulation. Right, next up, Dizzy. There's a couple of um, 8mm bolts with 30mm heads. I use a ratchet spanner. Just can't get a socket on. And there we have it, one dizzy. It's been highly marred up as you can see, but it doesn't look too bad. So yeah, right. Right, that's the front of the engine stripped, really easy. Good opportunity now guys for you to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because I'm gonna be doing loads of work on this and you don't wanna miss it. Right, we're now onto the back of the engine. This is an XC inlet manifold um, with some let bits on, so they're XC injectors. So yeah, a little bit concerning, but let's strip it and see what we find. So, turbo top hat. Four M6 10mm nuts. And that is that. Now straight away, that should have a gasket. If it doesn't have a gasket, it won't seal. Quite a simple stuff. Obviously this has got turbo pressure through here. It's just gonna leak, it's gonna be down on power. So it's a good job we took that off. 
Right, throttle body. Again, four M6, 10 mil nuts. They should have the built-in washer, but they don't. These aren't the original. Doesn't really matter. So there we go. Another thing I've noticed, that breather part there is very split. Um, we don't actually use these on a Nova conversion. It's not the end of the world. I will plug this in and just strap it up, but that can just be capped. Throttle body is functioning nice, not sticking, no excessive play. Sometimes these get play in them, a little linkage setup. Yeah, that works really well. So next up, fuel rail, couple of M6 with 5mm Allen keys holding them on. Now there should be, from memory, a stud there and all the earth bolts with it for the engine loom. So I need to look into that and probably get one. Right now, carefully wiggle these out, like so. And like I say, they are C20XE injectors. You can tell because of the colour, like a off-white creamy colour. They should be bright yellow in a C20 let. Saab ones are red. Um, I think C20 XE, C25XE ones are blue, uh, but that's about as much as I know. Right, inlet now. Again, not a lot holding this on. M8, 13 mil nuts, just like the front. There should be an idle control valve at the bottom. It's not there. This was actually sold as a working engine straight out of a car, so a little bit disappointing. But when you're dealing with 30 year old second hand motors, this is what you expect. So the last one's a bit difficult to get to, so I'm using the ratchet spanner. And there we go, inlet manifold. And if you look in there, you can see some nice clean looking inlet valves and nice clean inlet tracks. So that's a good sign. Right, now it's just a case of taking this off. Now, again, it's loose. So there's a lot of loose things on this car, but one thing to note is this has never been painted. And the reason I know that is because that insert at the front hasn't been painted. That should be bare aluminium. It's very rare you find them. So it is kind of original, which is nice. Original plastic cover too, which is pretty good condition. It needs a bit of a clean. I might give it a touch up, but yeah, not bad. One cam cover. So the cams. Exhaust cam is a little bit rusty, if I'm honest. However, that doesn't alarm me. I've seen stuff like that before. I can clean that up carefully, and I think it will be in good condition underneath it. It's only very minor rust, surface rust. The cam lobes don't have any scoring or major marks or anything like that. But yeah, they look pretty good to be fair. Quite pleased. And also you'll notice the engine looks quite clean inside. A little bit dusty. It's clearly been a part in someone's shed for a while. They've thrown it back together to sell it. Um, cam caps are in the correct order, which is good. So yeah, they can come apart. So, M6 on the end, two of them. 10 mil head and the rest are M8 13 mils. There should be washers on these. There's one on one side, none on the other. Standard. No washers on that whatsoever. Or that one. That one has two though. So I'm starting from the outside going inwards. It's like reverse of putting them in basically.
So, two washers on that, one on that. So far, we've found about a third of the washers we should have. I will say as well, while these are off, they're in pretty good condition. A little bit of very minor marks. They're not actually proper scores. They're just slight marks, really. So I'm not worried about them at all. Cams look, again, in good condition. That's good. That's the inlet cam. I have no idea if it's an XE inlet cam or a LET. I'm going to have to do a bit of research, maybe do some measuring, because the LET one has one millimetre bigger lobes. So it's got one more, one millimetre more lift, essentially. The last cap, now there's a little bit of a rusty mark just from the cam being rusty, but it looks alright. And one very rusty looking exhaust cam. Again, I do think it'll clean up. It's not as bad as it looks. Right, I'm going to take these out. I'm going to put them in the order they should be in. I'm also going to clean them and pump the crap out so you can squeeze them up. Hopefully you can see that. That pushes up. They're actually quite nice then. Now this, if I'm honest, looks to be quite a low mileage good engine. Now I'd say somebody's taken it out of a car years and years ago. It's been left in someone's shed in bits. They attempted to rebuild it or do something. They've I don't know, needed some money recently and I thought, sod it, I'm going to put it back together badly and then sell it as a complete engine. Which is a bit of a shame, but hey ho, we can make it right. It needed to come apart anyway, really. Right, timing cover wasn't actually tightened on, so that's not a problem. So I should be able to just lift this off now. Like so. Right, looks like the head gasket has gone between the cylinders here. But the pistons all look in really good condition. The balls look in good condition. Can't see any marks or anything other than obviously minor marks. So yeah, so maybe head gasket went on the car, took the engine out, went to strip it, never did it. Who knows, but yeah, it's definitely been blown between cylinders there. So just going to use a straight edge steel rule just to check the block. And it looks good. I can't see any low spots. So yeah, happy with that. So I'm just going to use a flat sanding block with Avernet cloth. Just go over the top. Just make sure there's no low spots that I didn't see. And just make sure it looks all right. This is just 400 grit, so it's not going to do it any harm. And obviously I'm going to clean all this afterwards, get rid of all the crap, so yeah. So that's cleaned up really well. Another thing that supports the fact this is a low mileage good engine is the water galleries. They are in really good condition. They're normally quite rusty around here, and they're not. They've still got all the original shape. So yeah, that's another really good sign. Right, next job, I'm going to turn the engine over, take the sump off, have a look underneath it. Right, the sump's held on with M6s, again, 5mm Allen keys. Again, they're not tight. Oh, well, that one was. Now, this has got the original cork gasket. I'm going to replace that with an 8 valve gasket. They're rubber, they're better. Yeah, they just. It'll still leak, but they are better. The only reason this hasn't leaked is it's not had any oil in it. One sump. Right, oil pickup pipe again looks clean. 
M6, 10 mils holding them in. So this is the baffle plate. Now the eight valve gasket has this built in. So this is no longer fit for purpose. These cork gaskets are terrible. Straight out of the 60s, we don't need them. So they're going. Right, crank. Looks all right from what we can see. This is the later heavier crank, which is a bit stronger. Fitted standard on alert. Nothing wrong with it. Um, on an XE, I'd recommend the lighter crank, but these, they're fine. What I'm going to do, I'm going to check the big end bearings, just see what they look like, because we're not going to replace them if they look okay. I'm just doing a bit of a freshen up. So 14 millimeter, I think they're a 10 millimeter bolt, 14 mil head. I'm undoing number four, because it's the furthest away from the oil pump. So realistically, if any of them are faulty, it'll be the end one. It's normally that one. And there we go, removed. I would say that is in very, very good condition. As is the crank. So again, I think my friend who bought this engine has got very lucky. I'm just gonna put that back on. So I'm now checking the main bearing in the center because it's got a thrust washer in it. Now it looks in really good condition. So I'm happy to put that back. Um, and I can tell the owner to see what he wants to do. So I'm just sticking it back in now and away we go. So next up, I need to remove the crank pulley and all the timing pulleys. Now these are well worn and it's a good job we're replacing them. That's all I'm going to say. Now the lower pulley is known for being seized up on these let engines. So I always heat them up a little bit first and then use a windy gun to get them off. Works normally very well. And this time is clearly no exception, right? Now all I need to do is remove the rear timing cover and the water pump, which again is very corroded. And then finally the oil feed. And finally, the dodgy looking turbo line. Now this is going to go in the bin because of that. I'm not happy with that. It should not have a Jubilee clip on the end. So there we have it, guys. One C20 let, stripped down. I know it's not fully stripped, but stripped well enough for what we need. I am really pleased with it, to be fair. For the age of the engine, it's in really good condition. Um, I know we can make a good motor out of this. So if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. In the next episode of this, I'm going to be cleaning it up, painting it, and I might even start reassembling. Who knows? See you later, guys. Bye-bye.